our thoughts are not that original. Like we really all have a lot of the same thoughts and fears and anxieties. So you're not alone. Um, you know, the conversations at the beginning and, and when you're ready to do so, um, there's people who want to help you. Welcome to the multiverse, where we believe that mushrooms can actually save the world. Each week, we'll be meeting with thought leaders and experts to extract the best insights and stories across everything from functional fungi, psychedelic medicine, and so much more. Thanks for listening. Step into the multiverse with us. You guys, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, we're, thanks we're for have, coming, guys. We're going we're gonna to chat for around 30 minutes. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Allie Shaper. We're doing a live recording of our podcast, Into the Multiverse. This is our second time doing this. We, we chatted last week at this time. But um, for those that are listening, we're going to have an audio version of this. We are live right now at ACL, Austin City Limits in Austin, Texas. And Noah Cyrus needs no introduction. Everyone here knows you. Thank you so the much for being here. The one last week was like, <laughs> the one last week was insane. It was like a big introduction. I mean, I could give you another introduction no, 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 if you want. That was enough. We, we, everyone who I knows Noah Cyrus I needed, is yes, doing Yes, 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 okay. <laughs> So it's all good. Well, th- you know, this is, this is such a cool moment because these are all of the people that probably have been listening to. Who's been listening to Noah since she's been like 16 years old? Yeah, so cool. Everyone here has likely been following your journey. And like I shared last weekend, I'll share briefly again. Um, I actually didn't put this together until we confirmed we were doing this interview. I didn't piece it together that this was your song, but I have Stay Together. Who knows the song Stay Together? I have such distinct memories with my, one of my, I'm a triplet, with one of my triplets listening to this song in the back streets. You're a triplet? I'm a triplet. What? Yeah, this is, we'll, we'll put a pin in that for another time, but. That's so crazy. Yeah. I've, I've <laughs> always wondered what that's like to like have three of you. It's a good life. It's the only thing I've ever known. Are so. you all extremely <laughs> similar? Or com- very different. Very my sister different. looks more like you than she looks like me. Oh, okay. So you're not identical. No. Okay. No, okay. No. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. But we have, you know, we have this memory of listening to Stay Together on the back roads of Missouri and just jamming out to this song. Your music is iconic, and I'm so <laughs> glad that you make it. So thank you. So I wanna I wanna start by talking about. I mean, there's two things to celebrate right now. One is that you're on tour, which is amazing. Two is that you just released your first debut album. It's called The Hardest Part. Yeah. It's it's fucking incredible. So congratulations. Thank um, you. Let's just let's just dive right into it. Who is this album for? Why did you make it? Um, I mean, I think the album. I don't think I ever really made a conscious decision to be so transparent. I think that was just kind of how I was writing it. So as much as it is for other people to relate to and listen to, this album really, I think it's this album's kind of an autobiography like where it just is so much for me that i was a bit worried in the beginning that like oh will be will anyone be able to relate to this is it like alienating anybody by making it so personally about me like so that was kind of like a question of mine in the beginning um but i quickly learned that's not the case i like your shirt yeah, yeah, yeah. You were out. You were there on Monday. Sweet, sweet. One of the things that I think is the coolest part about the album, and first of all, when you played the, the so the namesake of the album, there's a song, there's a track called "The Hardest Part." Yeah. The first line of that song gave me chills. When you just part, it has like such a powerful beginning, and the lyrics of that song in particular are really powerful. You spoke a little bit about them on stage, but. Um, can you share a little bit about that song in particular, why you decided to name the album The Hardest Part? Were there any other name contenders or was that like was that definitely the one you were going with? Um, no, I was going to maybe call the album Noah, but I didn't really want to do that. I, I, I had I had thought that would probably be it. Like for like since NC-17 wasn't a thing, I thought it would probably just be called Noah or Noah Cyrus or something along the lines of that my name um but i don't know once once i wrote the hardest part it just seemed really quite fitting for the rest of the album um 
there's so many like topics that I touch on in the album. So it just kind of felt suiting for all of those. Um, but that song in particular is just about like the growing pains of going back home and getting older. And for me, in my case, I felt like I felt like my town, my hometown looked the same. Everything looked the same, except for the people that I loved that lived in it. They were getting older and I was getting older. And each time I went back, things were different. And um, the worst time of the day for me in Nashville is whenever it's ending, because those trips are usually not as long as I would want them to be. There's so many people I don't want to leave. So I just remember like, as a little girl, anytime the sun would go down and I'd start to feel the breeze and the shadows would be hitting the ground. I remember being so fearful because I knew the day was about to end and I'd have to give my dad a hug and I'd have to leave and I'd have to tell my grandmother goodbye and I knew she was getting older and I knew it'd be more time away from her of her getting older. Um, and just recently I did. I went back and I spent the last month of my grandma's life with her. Um, and so time does change a lot of things and it changes so quickly. And I, I've always, I've, I've always been trying to bargain that part of life and you, and you can't. It's really interesting going home because no matter, no matter how old you are, anytime you go home, you immediately return to 16 year old energy. You like, almost like drop back into that, into that place. Yeah. <laughs> I go back to being like, freaking like eight years old I feel like sometimes like no matter how enlightened you are you're like mom yeah <laughs> no I know I I literally like yeah my I my dad still treats me like I'm an eight-year-old kid like and my brothers I feel like to the men in my family I just have not grown up in any way so that's how Nashville is <laughs> for me well and this and the songs Loretta song is is about your grandmother and it's really beautiful it's, it's the last song on the album I wrote and Oh, go ahead. No, no, no. Go no, ahead. No, no, you first. What were you going to say? <laughs> I was just going to say, you, <laughs> the, you know, I love that you ended with it because it's such a powerful, you know, the whole album is like really inside your own head. You know, like you really get to see the inner workings of your thoughts and it's very yeah. vulnerable. It's really powerful. But, um, you know, to be able to write about death and that process, death and rebirth and your entire experience of that, I just love that you ended with that of such a, Thank of a you. personal album. Yeah, I wanted to end the album, my grandma, both of them, because I wrote the song about my grandmother, Loretta, who had passed away in 2020, August 2020. And oddly enough, um, my my dad's mom passed away before my grandmother's two year anniversary. Um, so their passings were like in a way a week kind of apart in their dates. Um, so it was already a very hard week and I was going through a lot mourning the loss, just still mourning. And I feel like whenever it lands on that date, I think anniversaries of losses are just extremely hard, you know? And, uh, so I now kind of have that song as a dedication to both of those women. They both made such a huge impact on my life. My grandmother, um, Mama, who just recently passed away this year, our our main connection was music. So it's my honor to dedicate this album, these songs to her. I remember the last thing, last song we really listened to was Against the Wind by Bob Seger. And we were laying in her hospital bed and I had just done this thing for Sirius XM. And it was, it was just like a little acoustic, or, I think a few of my band members and I doing doing Against the Wind and she had it saved on her phone and, and was listening to Against the Wind over and over and reminisced the 70s and when and when that record came out and talked of those memories of when that record came out with my dad. And music has just been such a, a connector for me in my life with my family, with relationships. Music is like a language, I think, for me. One of, one of the things that I... I mean, I personally would love to know about you. I think everyone else here as well. Um, and we actually, when we were we were, you know, sharing this this podcast on on social media over the last week, and some people were like, "I really want to hear about your creative process." And like, obviously, there's a lot of you understand where the inspiration for the songs come from. But like, are you walking through the grocery store and you get hit with a, a wave of inspiration? Like, where are you when you're the most creative? And like, what does that actually 
look like? Like as detailed as you want to be about it, but I would love to hear the behind the scenes of how this gets created. I think a lot of times it's in my car. I'll like have an idea or something. I'm in my car a lot of the time and I drive a lot even at nighttime just to like clear my head. But my songwriting process is very slow and very linear. Um, in a pop room, you usually, what I'm used to, for older songs, I remember going in and you start with a chorus and then you or you start with melodies for the whole song. You're trying to get a melody to flow for the whole song or you're starting with then the chorus and you're matching it to the melody wrote. I just can't write like that. I write extremely lin linear. I start with the beginning I have a verse and I have a loose melody and if I need to bend it around, you know, I will. And I think part of that really, I learned to be more, to flow more uh, with my writing whenever I really started writing with PJ more because I felt like I didn't have to like rush to get a song done. We, we just would sit and write and really we just started writing from the beginning to the end. And I found that, that that's just, I mean, that's how life moves, you know? So that's how I tell a story. So it's really linear, the process, and it's sections of the song, beginning, middle, end. And one of the things, of the things we chatted about last week was listening to the, to the album from beginning to end. It's 33 minutes. You recommend people listen to it from the start to the end, and it really does tell a story. 33 I, minutes. It is? It's 33 minutes, 46 seconds. Wow. Yeah. I don't you know, know if you your know. shit. I know my shit. I Googled that. Okay. I Googled that. But listen to it from start to finish. It's really, really beautiful. And I'd Please love listen to start from please, finish. Please. That's my preferred way of you guys <laughs> listening would be from start to Not every time. But if you haven't listened yet, you should listen start to finish. Mike Crossy and I like sat and put every song where they're supposed to be for a reason. So... Well, you know when you listen to playlists too, and when the song ends, you memorize what song comes oh, after. Oh yeah, and then so, it doesn't play, and you're thrown off. I, well, it's I had a few moments where I was like listening to you. I was listening to you perform, and I was expecting the next song to come because I I listened to start to finish. Oh, so that's funny. Yeah, so I was I was memorizing the album. But um, actually, one of the thoughts that I had, I was I was you know watching you on stage. I was thinking a lot about peak moments, and I was walking away from the stage with my friend to come to come back here for this and. A lot of I think a lot about this idea of destination happiness, right? And a lot of like what we're all going towards in life is these big moments, whether it's like monetary success, career success, like big moments of achievement. And then you achieve those things. And a lot of people report like, you know, that's a peak moment being on stage at ACL performing for thousands of people or any of the things that you've achieved. Whether it's, you know, like you've had you've you've done a lot of really cool shit. Um, how do you balance the like peak moments that you've had and then going kind of back to like you know you and Marshall hanging out like what does he do you have that like kind of dip that people report like any things you want to share for people around this idea of like if this then you know prolonging happiness goal oriented stuff I really just I've been trying because happiness was something that I was looking for for so long and now that I'm feeling it, I, I think I'm just trying to take everything day by day. And, you know, like being on tour, I was extremely nervous to go on tour. I thought I was going to get really homesick. I hadn't been away from home for a really long time. And with the pandemic and everything, I really haven't been on a proper tour since I was like 18 years old. So like I was also kind of afraid to be away from my team and like, I, I I know I'm very close with my band and stuff, but you know, my team's kind of popping in and out. So I was I was really nervous to like go from being on stage with a ton of people who I love and love me back and that and, and then going home home to a hotel and it's very quiet and no one's there and you're alone with your thoughts and in in older cases with myself, I would go in there and spin and also was struggling with drug abuse. Um, so, you know, this is a very di different touring experience for me and it's a very happy one and I'm very happy to be here and I'm very grateful to be here. So, um, yeah, I think honestly m having Marshall here has really been calming for me. Yeah, no, because I, I 
I remember I was having kind of a hard time the other night, like with anxiety and like just social anxiety as a whole with so many people and, and everything. Like I still get anxious, like I love doing it, but I really, I get anxious. So like just going back to the room and like sitting with Marshall and he knows when I'm anxious and he'll come to me and he'll lay with me and it's so calming and Marshall has such a calming energy and and really just calms everyone that he's around. Um, I'm hoping he doesn't like piss on your stage. Come on, buddy. Um, so yeah, he really has saved the day. He knows we're talking about him. Yeah, I, he heard his name and now he's up. His butt's all dirty. I don't know why. He's proud of you. He's proud of mom. Um, oh, I'm proud of him. <laughs> I have a proud mom. Hi, guys. Taking a brief second away from the show to tell you a little bit about our sponsor, Supermush. Supermush is actually a brand that I co-founded. You may have heard us talking about Supermush and or functional mushrooms throughout the show. But long story short, functional mushrooms completely changed my life. I started using them as a part of my daily routine about six years ago. Everything about my vitality, my skin, my hair, my energy levels were on a completely new playing field that I had never experienced before. And we started Supermush to help other people get their daily dose of mushrooms back into their world, but in a way that was really easy and on the go and accessible and tasted good because a lot of times mushrooms don't taste great. Super Mush is actually the most effective way for you to get functional mushrooms into your system because they are in the format of functional mushroom mouth sprays. We make three mouth sprays for energy, immunity, and chill. A lot of people don't know this, but mouth sprays actually have the fastest absorption rates. You will feel their effects almost immediately. I use all three of them every single day, energy in the morning, immunity in the afternoon, and chill every single night before I go to bed. If you would like to try Super Mush, you can use code ITM15 at check out. That's ITM15. This will give you 15% off your next order at supermush.com. We also make a whole line of really cool mushroom festival forward streetwear. And if you want to stay in the know for everything that we're up to as far as events, new product launches, you can join our text program by texting MUSH, M-U-S-H, to 38048. I'd love to hear like a little bit more about your relationship with animals. We talked about it a little bit last week. You mentioned horses. You grew up, you grew up riding horses. Um, and I actually, I was listening to another podcast with another musician that I love, and they were talking about their relationship with animals and how that really is, has been a huge healing part of their journey. I know that, you know, a lot of what this, this conversation is about and a lot of what we wanted to share the message around was like healing through music, but it sounds like animals um, and a few other things have also been a part of your healing journey. So anything you want to share around your relationship, whether it's with Marshall or horses or anything that's been super helpful for your healing process. Yeah, my dogs. I mean, I remember I remember in days like when I was struggling with addiction or whenever I was starting recovery and those days were really hard too. Um, the days where I like could not get out of bed to feed myself or to give myself water or for myself to go to the bathroom. I would get up and I would take them to go to the bathroom and I would they would get me out of bed in the morning and them waking me up in the morning at a time I felt so purposeless and not not like I had a reason to live at all. I've at least had them. And um, again, my my dogs are really intuitive and really special and they know when I'm having anxiety or um, a panic attack or um, I, they're, they're just really intuitive and they, they know. So whether it's mellow, mellow, his, his way of like coming and calming me down is he'll put his paws right here and he'll like sit for as long as I, I need like with his paws right here and he'll let me like hold on to him. Um, or Marshall, like he's more like a lap dog. He'll like lay in the lap or whatever. So even just like those acts of like them coming to me and just feeling their petting their bodies and Marshall's so soft and like feeling textures and like that feeling for me, whenever I'm laying down and I'm, and I'm having a panic attack, I'll listen around for sounds or I'll feel their fur and what I taste, what I smell, what I see, what I hear. So I go through the senses. So having them, I, I know I, every time I'm doing the senses, I'm like, okay, I feel martial or I feel mellow. So it's very calming. Well, I think one of the 
most powerful things when people are talking about their journey with mental health. And I've heard this a lot. Like I know this for myself when, um, when I have dips, when I have to show up for other people in my life, it also gives me massive perspective and a lot of, you know, the most successful people in the world. I like to study the habits of, of people that really work on their mental health because it is a journey and it's not, it is not a linear process, but a lot of people um, that are really powerful in the world and have achieved a lot of things always, um, credit their success to a few people that believed in them when they didn't believe in themselves. Like I, you know, some of those people for me are, are in the audience with you guys. Like when I have, me too. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Shout out to those people, you yeah. know? Um, and it's so important. It's so important to have those relationships in your life. Is there anything you want to share? Like, you know, you don't necessarily have to name the people if you want to, please do. But people that you call people that really have believed in you and been your rocks when you haven't, you know, had that same feeling about yourself. Well, my two best friends, they literally just got on their plane from like coming to see this set and now they're on the next plane to go to Memphis and then they're driving to Nashville. So like they're here and supporting me right now. And um, Parsa and Sabda, their brother and sister, I've been we've been best friends for years now. And um, my best friend, Lucas, my managers, Nick and Mookie. Um, my, I've been in therapy and psychiatry for a while now, but I really, really started taking it extremely seriously whenever I like committed to recovery and I really had like dedicated a lot of my time to therapy. So my therapist is, is like a huge part of my life. Um, but thing about progress, we were talking about this last week is like progress is not like up. And then you just like stay up and then like you don't even go flat and you don't even go down and up. You're going like in circles. Progress is infinite. It goes up, down, around. It is completely infinite. So you're always working and you're always progressing. Um, I, I, I try to like be as clear as possible as I'm literally just like figuring everything out and being as transparent as I can while I do it. Um, and I'm just like giving advice that's given to me. I'm not in any way like, I, I don't even know how to, I, I just like, I'm just giving uh, suggestive advice on things that help me. I am, you know, not the master of any of this. I have no idea, you know, I'm fairly new to a lot of it as well. So I'm with all of you and yeah, oh, word. sorry. But, you know, it's it's so important. And what one of the things I think that's the coolest thing about you, obviously, you're like an incredibly talented artist, but you are really transparent about your journey and it really resonates with people. So obviously everyone here, we love her music. She's amazing. Right. But yes, yes. but you you share about your journey with with death, with mental health, with love, with falling in and out of love. And those are the things that really resonates with people like the lyrics of your songs are really vulnerable and you had such a powerful message last week when we were talking about mental health like these are the, this is what's reported and this is all you know the reported data is always much lower but like one out of every eight people globally are struggling with some sort of a mental health disorder and that's just the stuff that's reported right like that's not taking into consideration like the actual amount of what's happening in the world it's a very um we're living in the most interesting time that has ever, that has ever, you know, that's ever happened. And you sharing about your journey with mental health gives people permission to do the same. And I would love if you, you know, if you have a message you'd like to share with people that listen to your music, they're huge fans. Um, I know that like, raise your hand if no, some of Noah's music has helped you get out of a mental rut, you know, anything, anything you want to share to those people that are going through similar things? Yeah. I mean, the progress, thing and just that like I share my music in hopes that I find others that are like me as well and um, you guys are extremely not alone and um, whether it's therapy whether that's available to you or not starting the conversation is extremely, extremely important. So I would say look through the resources, find resources you connect to. Um, there are people that 
will help and not want to help. Um, and starting the conversation is the first step. So um, when you are ready, because it took me a really long time to be ready, and I know what it's like to have people who also really want to help you, but you just can't do it yet. Um, you're also not to be, a, you, you don't need to feel ashamed for that or guilty. I know it comes with it. Um, I've experienced that as well. And I also go through the guilt of, you know, mistakes I've made during my addiction or before or after now. I get, deal with that every single day. So whatever you're feeling that somebody else has felt that too. I've realized that all th our thoughts are not that original. Like we really all have a lot of the same thoughts and fears and anxieties. So you're not alone. Um, you know, the conversations at the beginning and, and when you're ready to do so, um, there's people who want to help you. I, I shared this last week for, for those that didn't hear this part. Um, one of the, my favorite books is called Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. It talks about this guy who was the greatest Roman emperor of his time. And the whole book is his journal and his conversation between him, like in his own mind, talking to himself out of fear and then responding to himself out of wisdom. And I was like, this is so funny. This guy is having the same internal dialogue that any of us that go through imposter syndrome, any of us have. And I love that you said our thoughts aren't original because we feel like they're so original. We feel very isolated. And I think that's why your music really resonates with people because it gives them um, you know, a community to belong to knowing that they're going through the same thing. And I also love that you shared that this tour has been a really happy one for you because it also shows that like, although it's not linear, like you know, you are in an amazing place and you're continuing on your journey. Like you're how you're 22 years old, right? So you've been making music for six years. Imagine what you're gonna be like when you're 28. It's gonna be amazing. I'd love, I'd love to ask you a few more questions and we'll wrap it up. Um, talking about healing through music, specifically, you know, obviously your music's been super healing for a lot of people here. Who has been some artists that have just been, you know, whether they're just favorite artists, but specifically people who have been really healing to listen to you as you've been, you know, going throughout your life? Favorite artists, favorite bands? Man, I have a lot. I mean, my favorite artist of all time, I would say, is probably Ben Howard. And I listen to a lot of his music through a lot of my life. Um, I don't know. I, 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 yeah, I would say I have like a handful maybe of artists, my dad being one of them. Um, yeah, I was like the kid that did not like try to like run away from their dads whenever they dropped them off at school. Like I wanted to be like, guys, meet my dad. Like I like idolized my dad since I was a little kid and um, his music inspired a lot of my music. But um, yeah, I remember I remember being really lost at a time and I would I would put I would put Ben Howard's records on and and that would kind of bring me back to life a little bit. I, lo I love his music. A um, few more questions for you. Last week we asked you this specifically about music, but because you brought your uh, your dad up, I'd love to hear you answer this question in the lens of your dad. Always at the end of our podcast, we ask people um, for whatever we're talking about, whether it's whether it's music, whether it's mental health, whether it's psychedelics, whether it's you know, other alternative methods of healings, what that specific method of healing, uh, what the greatest lesson they've learned from that. Because you mentioned your dad, I'd love to hear you say like, what is the greatest lesson you think your dad has ever taught you or the greatest kind of takeaway you've taken from him? There's probably so many, but if you had to pick one. There's so many, but I, I mean, honestly, I literally wrote a song about it. It's called Stand Still. My dad used to say when you don't know what to do. He still says it when you, sissy, when you don't know what to do, just stand still. Um, and it really just means like n no you can wait on you and if you don't know what to do no, like just just you can hold on and uh, the world moves so fast time moves so quickly so taking those extra 
seconds to reconnect yourself and and whether it's walking outside and breathing in the fresh air or just taking time to take care of yourself and stand still um and and let life work its way out of of whatever si the situation is um and i really needed that at a time when i was really struggling um and and i feel like that saying kind of has saved my life a couple times so yeah i picked that one i love that so stand still guys as you're going throughout this weekend take some moments chill and i think also for you i hope you've been you've been on tour you've been almost every night this week right performing yeah i hope you take some some yeah, standstill yeah. moments after this um last few questions what's next for you what can people expect uh where can people expect to see you next where is the next tour date where you're going to houston right i'm going to nashville next nashville. on sunday i've got a show in nashville but i'm on tour right now the hardest part tour and um my new album just came out the hardest part um, and a new song just came out today from that album. It's called, the, it's just, it's unfinished, but the acoustic version. Um, I'm doing kind of this new deluxe album um, where I'm just, I'm taking different elements from each song and like highlighting those elements that weren't really highlighted in the mastered version and what's on the album. So just giving like a completely different, oh yeah, a completely different, element and and different spin on the songs but also that are like very uh cohesive with the rest of the album you're just getting different versions of the record so i'm excited for you guys to hear those amazing well i'm so stoked to keep up with your journey to continue to listen to your music since you know i've I guess I've literally been listening to it since it came out when you were 16. So I'm excited to hear the rest of the journey. I think everyone here is as well. So guys, give it up for Noah Cyrus. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast twice. Thanks. Twice. No, but this was fun. I'm so glad. So I'm fun. so glad. We'll do it again. Marshall, thank you Marshall's for coming to hang. He's pooped. a little bored. He's like, I'm so sick of hearing you guys He talk. is so tired. Marshall, give it up for Noah and Marshall, you guys. Thank you for listening. And we'll see you soon. Bye, Thank guys. you, guys. Thanks for diving into the multiverse with us. If you're interested in being a featured guest on the show, sponsorship, partnership, or you're just mushroom curious, we're always looking to expand our mycelium network. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at Into the Multiverse, where you can find clips from this podcast, psychedelic legalization news, events that we're doing, and so much more. In addition, we've also created the world's first ever mushroom-specific marketplace called The Multiverse, which you can find on Instagram at Multiverse or online at yourmultiverse.com. We've also created our own in-house consumer lifestyle brand called Super Mush. We make mushroom mouth sprays. We make a whole line of mushroom streetwear. You can find it on Instagram at supermush or online at supermush.com. We'll see you next week. Mush love.